with the crafting gamer on this one. And uh, this segment is on role-playing humans, demi-humans, humanoids, and aliens. And this time we're going to talk about navigating demi-human tropes. So as a player, how do you approach role-playing demi-humans given their inherent fantasy stereotypes? That will depend on the demi-human I am playing. But I try to... Ooh, excellent example. It's a concept character, one I never got to play. Uh, an orc. He's not... 100% outside of orc society as in he's not, oh, I'm a good guy. He's still a, I gotta kill everything in sight. But he's one of the few orcs that understands if he kills for somebody, he gets money. So Now he's thinking. Yeah, yeah but what does what does money do for an orc when that uh, blood doesn't do for him? Oh, he also, well, he also that... understands the monetary system. <laughs> okay. Mind you, he's also just smart enough to realize orc no good in village. Orc must be chained. The idea concept was is every time he went into a village, he was literally to be chained and put out in the out in the barn, and he would accept that because he knows humans don't like him. Okay, so how do you balance staying true to demi-human tropes while making the character relatable? Uh, I would play a. Well, for the orcs, I have a story of something I actually did play. For the orc, I would definitely play off the "I don't like people near me." If you're not, if you're not strong, I don't listen to you. Occasionally, the party has to beat me back into place because I'll get uppity, and I will be a super aggressive in battle, and I will want to take trophies. Okay, okay. okay. So you're playing the whole uh, uh, orcs believe that might makes right. And yep. if if you are strong and you have a different opinion, your opinion now deserves respect because it's coming from a strong person. Yep. Okay. I'm done with that. And uh, and uh, for a character I did actually play, which was a Rahuman, I'm de definitely more to the type of character I love to play, which is the healer, the helper, the person who stands more in the background and helps the person out front. Not like they're a meat shield, but because you're more of the support character. The, uh, I always felt that the um, Rahuman should be played more as that because that's how their backstory of how their species are has always been. They're, they're more of the, I'm going to help you succeed more than I'm going to conquer. So that's the I way don't I know what that off. is. But it, well, is no, that? That, that's, uh, that, that's uh, first edition AD&D where uh, uh, certain races could only advance so high in certain classes because their mindset wasn't for it. Yeah, and that, that's that's another example right there. Like uh, the, this race particularly uh, excels in their mind in their in their worldview as a support class, so they can advance in a support class much more than they could as a direct fighter class or whatever. Well, for Palladium, that doesn't matter too much, but that's the way I, I know. Like I know. The, the 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 idea is similar. Yeah, well, I think Palladium still plays. Know, plays on that i mean just because they're playable races it still says if i remember correctly kobolds and orcs and ogres and so forth are generally evil yeah so i wouldn't see them dancing around and frolicking with the elves and you know humans. it's almost like there are two groups in there do you want to play an evil anyway uh mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go uh, up to heathen dog here as a player how do you approach role-playing demi-humans given their inherent fantasy stereotypes that's right you have to imagine playing a demi-human right stop now it. i have played demi-humans before <laughs> because it was called for all right now what demi-human do I play? Well, that that is the the uh, uh, question each player has to answer, and it's dependent on two two facts: one, which one do you like the most, and two, which one fits into the game master's world. So you and the game master have to talk. So okay, I really like playing half elves. Do half elves exist in your world? Yes. Okay, where do they exist, and how do they fit in in society? And then you build your half-elf with that knowledge. Do not be the contrary asshole who, who you know, I love playing orcs, but all of my orcs are spellcasters. It, it, it doesn't matter what orcs in, in your world do. He's a spellcaster. He, he's, the, he's the orc drizzit. No, man. No. Get, a, get, out, get out of here. You're, you're a dumbass. Get and out. this is why I want to gate people, gatekeep people from the hobby. And I don't care how that sounds to folks. No, it's for that. That's one of the primary reasons, not respecting the game slash. What you do at your table is your own business. 
But if you're going to open your mouth publicly, respect the game, respect the traditions, respect the the setting, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. So I I would take the the GM's world world building and my preference and see if they can both fit. If they don't, well, one of us has to give. It's probably going to be me being the player because the great game master already made the world. So it's it's my turn to bend like a reed. So I will have to choose another demi human or change my idea of what a demi human is to fit into where how demi humans fit in his world. So that that's the most important thing. After that it's all gravy. As long as you have that going in as a player, then everything else is whatever. What strategies do you use to uh, highlight the alien nature of demi humans in your game? Oh god. This can, this can be as a game master or as a player. Oh yeah, no no no. As as a player, I lean into the cultural and biological differences just lean into them not uh not not like to make everyone else feel bad but but when i when if i'm playing a dwarf and i go underground or in a cave or whatever i'll go ah, you know visibly more relaxed because i'm in my environment again and i will i will point out the fact in as in as least bullshitty way as possible that no I, I can see just fine please uh have all of the light behind me i'm fine don't worry about it, it it'll actually blind me because i can see in this just fine or if i'm an elf and i finally get into the woods i'll do the same thing then if i'm a half elf and and not half but a halfling and i i see you know a grand feast or a bar or or a, a small village i'll be super enthused about that want to talk to everybody want to eat want to drink want to you know make a party whatever you know lean into the differences without being an ass about it that 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 right there shows everyone that i am a half elf this is my environment and it's how it is and that's really all you need to do because after that, it's just bonuses or minuses to your roles. So the most important thing is that that you role play, not like I'm completely ineffectual unless I'm in a village. No, that's stupid. It's just that you role play your character being more comfortable in your bio-essentialist environment. And your goal, that's all you got to do. Okay. Timothy Ferelli, as a player... How do you approach role-playing demi-humans given their inherent fantasy stereotypes? It's definitely based upon the setting. Um, am, I, am I playing a dwarven fighter or can I play a dwarven wizard? Um, some settings, dwarven wizards will be hunted on sight and killed on sight. So, nope, that's not going to happen. Um, am I... Uh, and if, whatever class I do to, or whatever race I do choose... Like uh, Heathen Dog said, go all in, go into the paint on the culture, uh, you know, and without being it a dick all. about it. I mean, well, I mean, sometimes even I mean, dwarves are known to be stubborn, so is there may be a little dickish uh, interaction going on. Okay, fair enough. So, I'll, I'll change my <laughs> response without being irrational about it. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. There, okay, yeah. all right. Don't be irrational, because yeah. Um, because otherwise, you're just you're going in for you're going to have a hard time. Uh, you're going to have a hard time at the, at the table. You're going to make the GM miserable. So he's going to take it out on you in any which way he can, and it's it's going to be just ugly. Um, up to you getting assaulted in game, which you know, some for some people. Um, so yeah, it's go all in. You know, don't don't be irritating at the table, but just go all in on the on the cultures on how on what makes a dwarf a dwarf, what makes an elf an elf, what makes a halfling a halfling, what makes a dog boy a dog boy. And one of the things that uh, again, and I'm not trying to shill one of my older videos. I really kind of want to remake it, but uh, I, I talk about the dwarf and elf in that quite distinctly. I mean, it's like a cat and a dog. And I don't remember the exact verbiage I used there. Mm. When a dog wags its tail. That's happy dog. What does it mean when a cat flopping his tail around? That's not a happy cat. Yeah, it, it, it's about to pounce. Yeah. So 
you take that right there. Now, if a dog sees a cat flopping his tail around, oh, you're excited. You want to play. And a cat's like, I'm about to kick your butt. And the, the flip side of it, you know, when, when the cat's just kind of being stoic and whatever, and the dog's like, oh, you're not feeling well. Let me come up and, and do my dog thing with you. The point is that's, that's elves and dwarves. So, you know, when you say uh, uh, don't be irrationally stubborn, I, I partially disagree. Just accept the consequences that come from that. I say partially disagree. I'm not saying ruin the table, ruin the game. I absolutely can see a dwarf dang near committing suicide by refusing to move because he promised his clan leader that he would remain here at all costs. That's not that, being irrationally stubborn. That's, that's not being irrational. No, well, that's... In, well, in no, no, in, okay, let, let's use the, the, the Balrog example. You're not going to beat it, but you said, and you're a dwarf, I, I gave my word to my clan that I will stand at the gate and I'm standing at the gate where everybody else is like, don't be dumb, let's go. We can, we can take this. And, nope, I said, yeah. I gave my word... I was going to stand here or even a lawful good paladin wouldn't have to give in on, or, or could say, you know what? This is just a bad idea. I gave my word, but sometimes your word can be broken for the greater good. Got to go. Uh, the I could see, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying I can see it where the dwarf would dang near commit suicide to do that. Okay. I can also yeah. see an elf completely waiting somebody out to like, you know what? I just don't care. Uh, but you have to, Sorry, I got a bunch of visions going on in my head right now. But uh, ultimately, because I know Crafting Gamer wants to jump in here, you just have to pay the consequences for them based on the setting and what the Game Master does. Because of that. Uh, Crafting Gamer, go ahead. Well, back to the cats and dog thing. Um, I've seen a lot of videos online of people making fun. Of, oh, my dog, my cat acts like a dog. Oh, my dog acts like a cat. Yes, but there are still key features. Like, for example, I actually had a cat. Well, my mother did technically when I was a kid. And a cat that did wag its tail like a dog when it was happy. But you could always tell it was going to pounce because the tip of its tail still, it was still a cat and its tail still did the I'm going to attack. It just wasn't as obvious. So even if you were to take a dwarf and raise it in an elven city, it might pick up a few elven traits, but it's going to be a dwarf. And it's going to want to live a dwarven life. No, no dwarf should want to live above ground. They'll make excuses yeah. for it. I make money. I'm selling ore. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm doing my thing. Look at me. Look what I got. Where inside, he's actually dying. Like, I wish I was with my family, my clan. I wish I could smell the, the forges. I wish I could, you know, just be underground with some mushrooms, whatever the heck dwarves do. I'm not a dwarf. I don't know. Um, and that, but see, and that's part of the thing that I think we need to get across here. It, Playing a demi-human should be alien. It should be hard. If you're playing it like a human, you're doing something wrong. You just are. And I'm seeing a bunch of things in chat. What about this? What about that? Those are all bad games or bad settings. There are people that just wanted to use the elf because everybody's used to it. That's not an elf. Okay? It's not. <laughs> like, like, like that, that's just somebody using that term because we're used to it. No other reason. Come up with your own races if you don't like how they are. But they have to have some sort of bioessentialism. Otherwise, you're just playing a human in a funny skin suit. Yeah, And uh, to, to, to answer the whole, uh, I, I promised I would stay at this gate and I wouldn't move no matter what. And so I won't. Even, even though the odds are, there are no odds, you're just going to get steamrolled. The whole party knows it, but you're a dwarf. You, you gave your word of honor to your chieftain. You can't leave. Now, if you have played your dwarf well, if you have played honorably to, to, to emphasize the, the fact that you are now holding your word of honor no matter what, then the entire group will elect to be a Barakas you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for those who now, don't get the reference, what is that? Yeah, for, for those who don't get the reference, this is, this is the A-team. B.A. Barakas had a fear of flying, but... Being the A-team, a roving mercenary band, you have to go all over the world. And to do that, sometimes you just have to fly. So they would commonly trick BA into, into situations where crap. Now he he's he's in a usually they they drug him and or, then or they beat him, him on the head a with a two by four. <laughs> or or hit him in the head with a two by four, knock him out, put him on a plane, and then he'll he'll wake up when he gets there. And he's pissed about being knocked out, but he's also happy that he's still with his friends and he he didn't have to remember being on a plane. So you would be a Baracus, the dwarf. And then was, who knocked me out? And you'd all point each other like a whole bunch of Spider-Men. So he couldn't blame anyone. That's how you do it. 
problem solved yes. and you know, it's over. Everyone lived. And I, mean, I want to be clear. I'm not telling everybody that you have to have, you know, stand my ground and every dwarf has to be suicidal. I'm just saying I can see it. I just want to be very clear because of their stubbornness. That is an inherent trait to dwarves. The, the stubborn. They are like stone. They are unmovable. It's all point of them. Um, remember, and we haven't said it here, but I'll say it now before we go on to actually, I don't know if I asked crafting gamer follow up, but we'll, we'll move on anyway. Um, is that uh, they are the personification of stereotypes. Now, this doesn't mean the historical ogre or different types of elves from different real world mythology. We're talking the Tolkien esque ones that permeate the fantasy setting that permeate from Dungeons and Dragons being the 800 pound gorilla to many other games out there where we're taught, we're talking that. So dwarves are stone. Now, one of my favorite stories that exemplifies this is worse than the dwarf. Heathen dog might remember this story. It's the obsidian's weaponsmith. Do you remember that story? Obsidian are rock. They're genderless rock people. <laughs> And uh, when they do something, they do it well. We used to say that uh, if you give, uh, uh, if you turn an obsidian into a postman, you're not going to get it quickly, but the mail will go through because he's a rock dude. Well, a, a, a obsidian weaponsmith, and I don't have it memorized verbatim, but you get the concept from this, is uh, was commissioned to make a weapon. So he starts making the weapon, and after a year. The dwarf inquired, hey, where's my weapon? And the obsidian is, I, I assure you, I'm working on this thing. You know, creativity takes time, but I'm going to give you what you want and more. Another year goes by, dwarf's like, hey, how long does it take to make a sword? He's like, I, I'm on it. I'm still crafting it. This is, this is going to be, you're going to be, you're going to love this sword. It's going to be the best thing ever. The five years goes by, the dwarf's like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. Where's my sword? <laughs> no, I, I promise you, this thing, uh, the craftsmanship is exquisite. It's great on and on this goes okay and then finally the dwarf ended up forgetting that he even commissioned it i don't know how a dwarf can forget something but we'll go with it <laughs> and finally the obsidian says dear sir i finished your sword and his daughter writes back my dad died like 10 years ago but that is oh. the concept of of like the obsidian is that time because he's a rock an obsidian can sit on What's that? Yeah, it has no meaning. Can sit on a cliff and watch the same sunset for two weeks straight and not realize that any time has gone on. That doesn't mean that none can charge into battle, whatever, but but it's got they've got this concept built into them where eh, time, they're slow, they're ponderous, they are what they are, right? Well, you can play on those things in a group, in a game, without being detrimental to the group. And that's a good way of just expressing your character's bioessentialism. Rock people like David Lee. Let's uh hold on here. Oh, we'll do this first. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta click on so many different things. All right. That isn't the right one. Although you can do that too. Charity We Support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer to the video's description for the link to where you can make your hopefully tax deductible donation. And of course, like, subscribe, share. Now Let's read some chat that we have. No super chats today. I feel like I'm not feeling the love. Actually, the panels aren't. Well, they don't get it anyway. Nobody's feeling the love. There can be no giveaway if we don't make it. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, so the editor says, Professor DM uh, had a thought that orc and goblin currency are something like fingers from humans and aliens. So there aren't that many gold pieces around. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they wouldn't have a lot of uh, gold pieces around. I love that idea. I do too. Trinkets. Yeah, I mean yeah, orc, orc, and ogre stuff. They the the whole society, you know, values strength. So, if 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 someone wanted to trade with the horn of a demon slain in battle, that's going to that's going to be very valuable. Whereas, you know, a a, a baby's finger is going to be worthless. It's going to be a penny. It's like, oh, you killed a baby. How strong you are, tough guy. You know, whatever. You know, so yeah, that that sounds cool. I like that. And Nerdy Ogre says, elves and dwarves don't hate each other in Palladium. I may be wrong about this, but didn't they blow up, like, the world and, and, and damn near wipe each other out? They do hate I each mean, other. I mean, been. they might not hate each other to the point now where they're trying to blow up the world anymore. They may have learned a lesson from that, but they, they don't walk around arm in arm saying kumbaya. Ooh, no, they hate each other. Yeah, Crafting Gamer had something. Uh, 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Crafting Gamer. You're muted. Oh, there you okay, go. Making sure. All right. Um, when it came to the uh, fingers and thing, uh, finger, uh, yep, that. In uh, Warhammer Fantasy, they are actually already did did something similar to that. One of the most common, like, universal currencies for the orcs is actually teeth. Because yeah. teeth, they grow like shark's teeth. And one of the most common th ways to get teeth, oh, I'm like five teeth short for this gun. Hey, oh, wait, oh, hey, you, yeah. Wham! <laughs> All right, here's my teeth. <laughs> there you go. You get the brutality of the orcs and its currency. Yeah. How, you yep. know what? How do you get my heathen dog? Ready? Yep. What are we? Muggers! <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? We're going to mug them. Oh. Right. Oh, so, I mean, and and look at that. The orcs are on a win-win right there. Uh, oh, uh, I keep going back to this video, and I apologize, but in, in that video, I, I talked about you should be afraid if you come across an intelligent orc, one that sees past this. It's going to be one in a million, but when you find that one, because that's the one that's going to unite the clans, that's the ones that's going to focus that brutality instead of on each other, on other people, that's the orc you should be afraid of. Because all the rest, whether it's because Grumpsh or because they're just uh, you know, disaffected elves, that's right, I said disaffected, not convert uh, or mutilated or whatever, but uh, uh, you know, they're, they're too busy beating each other up because you, know, you said a yo mama joke or something. But you get that one that can say, hmm, so let's, let's put that aggression in that direction. That's the orc you should fear. Because most orcs can't do that. That actually re reminded me of a, of a Chappelle comedy skit where, uh, you know, yeah, like I, I grew up in, in, in this place and there was gangs all the time, but I wasn't scared un until this, this black gang or Hispanic gang had a real small skinny white guy hanging out with him. <laughs> what did that son of a bitch have to do to get the respect of these guys? How nuts is he? I'm staying away. It's kind of like that. The 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 bookworm ogre. It, it, ogres are brutal, but they're stupid. A smart, brutal thing is so much worse. Yes. You 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 are now going to destroy whole countrysides. Just because you can think of ways to do that, that other mm -hmm. ogres can't. It's crazy. Kill on sight, basically. If if an ogre can read, kill it. Uh, I love this comment. The orc I fear is the one that keeps returning from the dead. Somebody's played Forbidden Lands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's move on into the next question, which is, who am I on here? Oh, I'm back at the top with Ethan Dog. Okay. All right, Heathen Dog, as a game master, because we talked about player before, as a game master, how do you approach demi-humans' inherent fantasy stereotypes? Well, as, as a game master, I, I tell the players that if you are playing a demi-human, and in this, in this system, in this, in this world, the, these demi-humans have these proclivities, you must also have these proclivities. That's it. No ifs, ands, or buts. Can you give you an cannot, example? For okay, for for example, if uh, if in this world elves are afraid, like literally afraid of of not being under the sky, like they have to have open sky above them or forest canopy is good enough. But in underground, in a cave, inside a building, you are not only you know anxious. And and a little bit uh, uh, fearful, but you may even have some minuses for interactions, some some other things, and you have to role play this. This is okay. important. You have to role play that. And starting off, no one can break from this mold, but I allow circumstances through role playing to uh, not comp can't completely change it, but mitigate. Like, uh, so you the know, character uh, can grow. Yeah. Yeah. Grow, yeah. grow. I mean, uh, it happens with people all the time. Aversion therapy, you know, like, it's just like you're, you're afraid of spiders. Well, the, 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 the therapist will, will, you know, surround you with spiders for an increasingly longer time to get you more used to it. Your fear will never really go away, but you will be able to handle it better. That can happen during play. It mm -hmm. can happen. But you, as your uh, you as the player, have to you know make sure that you are putting in that effort. 
and the game master has to respond to that effort. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because if you were to tell me that you were playing in a D and D campaign or, or whatever campaign, just again, eight hundred pound gorilla, right? And you played an orc, I'd roll my eyes, whatever, okay. But then you start telling me like, oh, dude, I was getting beat down. I wasn't allowed in cities. I, but twice, my uh, my, uh, my the party was like locked up, or they were kicked out, or we couldn't get the trope we or the, the MacGuffin we needed to solve a puzzle because you know I was whatever. Like all these bad things happened, but they kept suffering through it because they thought it was fun. We lost three other characters that we might not have lost had I not been in the group. You know, you know, whatever, right? Showing all these horrible things, but over the course of time, and let's arbitrarily say an orc could do this as everybody's level twenty, right? And you're level twenty. You you were able to push back that aggression and turn from say a D and D orc and here we go again into an Earth Dawn orc. You remember Earth yep. Dawn orcs had two things: one thing that would set them off no matter what, and there's nothing you could do, and then one thing that didn't set them off at all. So kind of graduate from everything making them grumpy. To, you know, we got it under control. There's this one thing you don't bring up, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I, mean, I can uh, see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, as as a as a demi human, your your uh, biological imperatives are dialed to eleven at the beginning. But through role play, through through uh, through concerted effort of the player that the that is noticeable to the game master, you can turn it down to say six. Yeah, yeah. But it'll That's never go away. Hundred percent. It'll never go away completely. But you just made it more manageable. That's fine. That is the best a player can do, uh, quote unquote, screwing with the with the bioessentialism of a demi human. So, as a follow up, then uh, for you is what techniques do you use? And you kind of explained some of this, but we're on the game master side now, so let's dive into it a little bit more. What techniques do you use to ensure demi humans' alien nature impacts the setting as a whole meaningfully? Every single other uh, NPC who meets you will treat you as a generic whatever you are. Every single time. Until they get to know you, they will treat you as average dwarf, average elf, average ogre. You may have proved yourself to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, much more nuanced to three villages over. But these, these sons of bitches have never met you before. All they see is what you are. And so they treat you immediately like what you are. If you're an ogre, they try and run you out and kill you. If you're a dwarf, they're like, oh God, he's going to, he's going to be a miser. He's not going to want to pay. I'm not getting any tips for this. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. You are going to be treated how you look because most of people who look like you act like how you look. And that's what I'm going to do. And it's never going to go away. Every new person you meet that that doesn't know you as an individual will only know you as your race and treat you as such. Never going to go away. And so everyone, all the players will always understand going in a new situation, this is the deal. It's a, And I want to stress here, and this isn't for any woke purposes or whatever, but because I, I want to really knock this home. When Heathen Dog says race in this case, we're I prefer the term species, and I'm kind of glad that d ds moved that, because no, but there's a reason for this. It's because you have to think of these things as different species. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a, a, an, a, another comment I'm going to make to this, but I want to see how these guys answer first. Uh, maybe I won't have to make it, but uh, that's related to this. So let's uh, move on down to Timothy Frehley. So as a game master, how do you approach demi-humans' inherent fantasy stereotypes? They, game master has to understand what the demi humans uh, stereotypes for that setting are. You know, they have to understand what is actually going on. Uh, I, for one, prefer to go with settings that you know are counterintuitive. They break the stereotypes. One of my most favorite, Sovereign Stone. Uh, dwarves are nomadic or nomads. Elves are anti magic Japanese. Honor, honorful. Orcs are seafaring and trading race. So you have to know what's going on with these races in these worlds. Uh, you have to embrace them. Um, if I'm going with the more traditional uh, stereotypes, again, you got to go back and go hard, you know, yell at, yell, yell at the halfling 
tra- uh, treat them as a kid when they come into a barn because they're small. You know, you, the human isn't paying attention. So, hey, no kids, get out. Um, and when they finally make you realize that they're they're an adult, put them in a high chair. You know, make, put them in a booster seat. Um, and, and along with Heathen Dog says, as Blazing Saddles so eloquently put it, you've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. These are people of the land, the common clay of the New West. You know, morons. <laughs> so I'm going to quibble before I give you your, for your follow-up question here. When you were mentioning those elves and orcs, mm-hmm. I, I hate that. Uh, and, the, yeah. and the reason being is because if you're going to go away from the trope, I just think you should give them different names. Understandable. Uh, now, now, this isn't you're a bad person. Now, I, for everybody out there, when I say this, this doesn't mean that I've looked at your table and I think you're a POS, okay? I, I'm not saying that at all. You do you at your table and mind your own business. My, my, uh, the reason why I say that here in this discussion is because I think that there are unified tropes that you're supposed to follow when you do these races or just give them different names even if they look like orcs even if they look like elves even if they look like dwarves or gnomes or whatever uh because when you say elf that should automatically have there, there should be a vision in your head of automatically what it is and if i have to throw all of that out like oh no 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 elves aren't flighty they aren't long lived they're actually honorable and they're studious or, or uh steadfast so that's not an elf that sounds like a dwarf in an elven body what just happened here so that's the point that i make of this not that he did anything wrong but if you're gonna if you're gonna use these races as people know them, this is why I don't like Dark Sun. If they just named the races other stuff, it would have made more sense. Man eating halflings, no. But <laughs> and and you that's a valid perspective. We're talking about though our imaginations, different cosmos, different realities altogether. So I got why it. not? So and that's what no, I no, like. no. You're, it's 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 legitimate. At your table, yeah. for your world, it's absolutely legitimate. There's yep. nothing wrong with it. But you you also understand that a new person coming in, seeing it from the outside, is going to say, that's this not is what they, they, Yeah, that's what they yeah. expect. Yeah, yeah. I it's going to happen. I'm trying to get that. So it's, it's the GM's responsibility to explain that to that new person. Sure. Hey, in this world, these are how these are. This is how this is. And that's not for anything at the table. Not even going to wait. Every word of this comment is wrong. Every word of it. <laughs> and now we'll move awesome. on <laughs> All right. um so how do you handle the differences in worldview and behavior between humans and demi-humans and that goes to the you know a lot of your interaction will be with morons with this is how they view what your race is you are you're in here until you can break yourself out of it it's the, you're dealing with people who just are ignorant mor- morons. Simple as that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll mic drop that there and go on to the crafting gamer. <laughs> as a game master crafting gamer, how do you approach demi-humans inherent fantasy stereotypes? Well, I try to, well, as a f- first time in any game, I try to approach them as the book portrays them. But as I get further into the book, I like to start playing off kind of my own things. Depending on how far, like if we're going for a whole campaign, I'll start playing off individual tribes that do this. But if at some point we restart, my, I'll just reset and have them do this, do it my way. Like, for example, I will play if Palladium, in this case, I'll say for new players, since I'm a veteran of Palladium, I will start off with the Palladium dwar- uh, uh, um, orcs. But the orcs I actually prefer now are Warhammer 40k orcs that Mushrooms? They're basically, yeah, mushrooms with the ability to build random shit. So I will, I will slowly, if I can, convert them over to that. And say I have the same feeling for elves. El- the elves from Palladium are nice, but my elves are literally neo Nazis, and I prefer that style of elf. Like they hate everything that's not them. They even hate anything that is them as, if it's not perfect. Huh. Elves are, in many ways, one of the worst races to ever come across in my world. You Elves are everyone's before. bad stepfather. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hmm. So, you can't do anything right. He's always right. You're always wrong. 
and you just have to you just have to suffer them because damn it they have power over you. Yes. So Cap <laughs> Captain Gamer, can you provide an example of where embracing a demi-human stereotype led to an interesting role-playing moment? Uh let's see here. Ooh. Uh I was playing a game with Flighty, which is about this is uh, my last Rahuman that I got to play. Um Flady let me slightly alter one of my spells. It's I think it's called mirror. You know, you create duplicates of yourself that can be used to you don't know which one's which. Uh I I he let me change it so I could cast it on something else. I was thinking put it on the juggernaut to make it look like an army of them is running towards the bad guys. Instead, I ended up casting it on a giant cannon that had so much magical power, I created seven of them and they were real. And they one shot at a dragon god. It's uh, okay. Well, it's the fact that I was playing the trope of they are the support class. That's why I like the mirror spell being I could cast it to intimidate it. It's su it supported one of the main characters. It just led to something I was not expecting. Okay. Well, do you guys have anything that, uh, that you guys want to follow up on, uh, add to the whole demi-human? Yeah, uh, you actually starred one. Well, yeah, I'm going to get to those in a moment, but if you need to bring yeah, it up now, but go ahead. It, that, that actually, if you could bring it up now, that'd be great. Which one, one is it? Paul. Paul. Oh, the last one? Yeah. Uh, the books often refer to the race information as common knowledge that most would be aware of. Again, that's why they always put you in this box when they first meet you. I, I agree. Nothing to say that there are those subsets of other of those races that are completely isolated. And that reminded me of uh, Kryn. Oh, I'm going to have there a bunch of comments about Kryn coming up. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. But uh, in the history of Kryn, there were the 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 Erda. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. And most uh, most of them devolved, became evil and became what? Ogres? Yeah, became the actual evil ogres, but there is still an island of pure Urda left that never, you know, was corrupted, and they are fantastically different than ogres, even though they are basically the same race. But they don't call them ogres; they call them Urda. Yeah, exactly. Well, that that was their original name. Oh that was the original name. So, yeah, I, I I do agree that that during gameplay you can find some isolated, some geographically or or uh, or uh, purposefully isolated tribe that is a throwback to time gone by. And in time gone by, elves were different. Dwarves were different. Half-elves were different. Uh, Half-orcs were different. Whatever. You know, they, they, they were different. And these people never changed. But never, ever, ever allow a player character to start off as, as one of these increasingly hypothetical bastards of race of the race never it, it'll it'll get in your player's head never give the player power over your world ever and that's the, exactly the, what you're doing. to continue on with that i think that there unless i'm reading into this paul i might be reading into this if i am i apologize but i'm going to take the negative side of this uh which is a part of me just wants to say outright no. Now, here, here's the example I'll use. Kryn also has the Sylvanesti, Qualanesti, and Dagonesti elves, right? Dagonesti and Sylvanesti couldn't be <laughs> more different. Wild elves and the haughty elves. Okay, and then the Qualanesti are, are somewhere in, in the middle there. Yet they all act like elves. None of them try to be diverse like humans. It goes back to the first segment. If you want to be diverse, you play a human. Every other thing that pops into your noodle or comes out of your mouth that disagrees with that is literally wrong. That is the whole point of humanity, is our diversity, is our versatility, is our adaptability. The whole point of these demi-human races, we'll get into monsters later, but these demi-human races is that they are bioessentialists. They are literally the personification of tropes. That is our personification of stereotypes, however you want to look at it. That is what they are supposed to be, to make them human, to be like, oh, they're just as diverse as humanity. Incorrect. Well, in my world, they are. You have a bad world because you have a world where you've just negated the whole point of being human. Now, if that's what you want, oh, I don't want humans on my world. Hey, got it. I've actually played in a couple of games way back in the day that were like that, and they were fun. I get it if that's your world, but don't take away the one power that humans have 
by making everybody else diverse. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, anything you guys want to follow up on? Otherwise, I got some comments I will read here. Okay. Uh, Engine Joe says, Kender a distrusted merely for being Kender. Yes. That's that, and that's the right way to do it. In fact, I'm going to piggyback on this and talk about tieflings. People are like, oh, I'm a tiefling, and I've got a tail, and I've got ram horns, and I got pointed ears, and I got all these weird things, which the original tiefling didn't even have necessarily all that much. It could happen, but most of them were just like, you look a little off, and that's about it. Um, the way somebody should react to a tiefling is, um, you know, uh, the oracle told me it was going to rain today. It didn't rain today. You know why it didn't rain today? Because the tiefling came to town. String it up. You know, the dog barked four times. Say, my dog never barks four times. My dog only barks once or twice. But it only barked four times. Or, but it barked four times. Or vice versa. My dog doesn't shut up. But this thing came by and my dog stopped barking. Because this thing's a demon. Tieflings should not be, la 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 la, I just bounce around the town. No. They are half freaking demon. It should be just like, at best, it should be like Star Wars. We don't serve their kind here. At worst, <laughs> string them up. Because she weighs as much as a duck. So, uh, so, and, and if you're not doing that, you, you, again, you're destroying what it means to be human and to be diverse. And, or you're playing on Forgotten Realms and nobody cares anyway. Because um, everybody there just dances you know, hand in hand. So this, that's the reason I said that while keeping this up on here is because exactly right. Nobody trusted Kender. No, they hate Kender. Some did, some didn't, but nobody trusted Kender. <laughs> yeah, with good reason. And a couple of years ago, or well, not more than a couple of years ago, a friend of mine uh, wanted to play a Kender samurai. So I posted that up on the boards and boy, did that better war. Raphael, if they changed Tiefling, I don't care. Tiefling started off as half demon. And if you say fiend, that's a demon. So now maybe in third, fourth, fifth edition, they change that nonsense, but tieflings are half demon. Uh, and great. They're half fiendish. Fiend is not a good word. Didn't say half friendish, said half fiendish. So it's still an evil piece of shit. <laughs> uh, kill tieflings on sight. Uh, if you have half elves or half orcs, then it's a race. If not, it's a species. I don't allow half species in my games, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying here. Uh, again, the the term, you know, people like you know the term ancestry or kin or race or species or or whatever. I like the reason I use the term species is for no other reason. I actually use the word race because that's what it's called in the book. Is for no other reason than to get your mind into the right makeup that you're not just talking about oh a breed of dog here. You're talking dogs versus cats versus monkeys. That that's the only reason why. It's not for any other reason. Also, if uh, if you like playing half orcs, uh, we have a T-shirt for that. Oh, that's right. Oh my God, what is that on Redbubble? I thought that got kicked off of Redbubble. I, th I think it, it's probably still on Spreadshirt, though. Yeah, it might be on Spreadshirt. I'll, I'll see if I can find it here. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> so what? What does it say? It says uh, half orc, huh? Yeah, my dad walked out on me too. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that shirt. I have to thank a co former co-worker of mine for that one. He came up with the idea. Uh, Kryn is no drow, but Dalimar is a dark elf. Yeah, I used to say this. Drow are this little circle. First of all, drow belong in Forgotten Realms, and that's it. But they're also in Eberron. Shut up, Eberron doesn't exist. Nobody likes that crap anyway. Um, for, you know, drow exist in Menzo Baranzen. Dark elves, drow are dark elves. But not all dark elves are drow. Dalimar is a perfect example. A dark elf is simply an elf that's fallen out of elven society, at least right. in the in the two ebooks. So. Drows are somebody who couldn't spell word. And the, uh, and then we already did the one from Paul. So, all right. Uh, so next segment we are going to talk about exploring, but humanoids monsters and alien races now we're gonna get really weird now we're gonna talk about role playing the orc because remember an orc actually isn't a demi-human i guess technically a half orc is maybe i don't know uh there are monstrous races or humanoids or how, whatever handbook you have that you want to call it uh but before we get there if you enjoyed this discussion please like this video and subscribe to all the panelist channels which you can find in the description and i stand by my comment they're half demon a fiend is a demon it's that simple.